Hi, today let's do something interesting and let's open and tear down the WFLY ET16S radio that is interesting because it's not OpenTX. This is the WFLY ET16S which is not the OpenTX radio and only this is, is interesting. It's running their own firmware and if you take it into your hands you have to say well yeah this is kind of feels like a well-made quality radio because the plastic is super nice super nice finish of the plastic the mold seems to be pretty new maybe this is somehow luckier but radio feels nice in your hands very nice switches eh, gimbals are okay but still feels like a radio but external appearances can be misleading so let's just open this thing and see what's inside of this thing the first interesting choice is the battery compartment because it's a sliding sideways door with the standard to 18650 bracket and after this is done we can continue with the disassembly looks like there are four screws that are holding the rear side back side of the case this one is still okay let me take out the transmitter module but we will take a look at the transmitter module kind of later and let's try to get the ah there are two extra screws over here now now almost almost something seems to okay the rubber panels on the side also has to be removed and here we go okay to hmm. i hate when they are doing this like that the ribbon cable between front and back i would have to okay this is this is done plastic Plastic is not marked anywhere, however, plastic feels like standard ABS. Might be wrong, but this is definitely not the cheapest ABS, because like I said, it feels kind of nice in your hand. We have this battery compartment over here, which kind of blocks the LCD. I don't think we will be opening that part today. First thing that we'll see is that all the switches are connected with the flat ribbon cable. This is not a good sign. We had examples of doing this like that. For example, the Jumper T16 and then they had to replace the ribbon cables all the time. It would be nice, but much better if those were just regular cables because those things tend to break okay i'm kind of interested in the mcu and in the radio part and looks like that another interesting choice is that the radio chipset is located over here and the antenna is connected over here this is not the sma you cannot apparently replace the antenna easily so we will have to get rid of the battery compartment and see what's going on below this thing. Okay, ribbon cables everywhere. Here we have the MCU, which is the STM32 F407. And I think it would be possible to run OpenTX on this radio if someone really wanted. Uh, but apparently nobody wanted, so this is it. The board itself looks well okay. -ish. Let me zoom in so we can have a detailed look on how the board is organized. We have the main MCU over here. We have the power section over here. Those would be two voltage stabilization circuits. We have a small vibrator over here that, well, vibrates when the board should be vibrating here we have the ribbon cable that connects to the lcd and the radio chipset this is not the multi-protocol module or anything like that this is the own radio link by the wfly and exactly the same board is present on the receivers that come with this radio but this is something we will not be talking about today okay and single connector to the antenna too bad the antenna is not somehow secured with some kind of celastic that should give a nicer but still 
I do have to say that the motherboard looks kind of okay. There is a lot of space. The, the positioning of the elements looks fine. If not, if not the ribbon cables everywhere, I would be actually quite happy with how it's built. Here we have the switching board apparently for the input for the external JR Bay modules because this thing can accept R9, this thing can accept Crossfire and also this thing can accept their own radio long range radio module uh, flat wires everywhere and finally the gimbals i do want to take a look at the gimbals because the gimbals are kind of interesting okay and that's the gimbal um the gimbal is painted accordingly with the color of the radio itself it's pretty light the whole gimbal is full plastic but we do have bearings over there so at least there are ball or needle bearing bearings over here and here are no whole effect sensors or not so much um hmm i'm not really sure if those are hull effect sensors or not maybe if we quickly no, those are whole effect sensors. I can feel it because the magnet, the, there is a magnet that connects to the to the screwdriver. So this is definitely the whole effect sensor, which is a good thing because whole effect sensor does not wear out um, because there is no physical contact between two elements like in the potentiometer. So the whole effect sensors only measure the magnetic field and and that so whole effect sensors pretty nice the gimbals hmm. okay the gimbals are standard you can replace the cap and you can also change the height of the gimbal and this looks very like any other gimbal out there also standard tensioning screw so you can change the preload on the on the boat axis and the on this gimbal we can see that there is the mechanism for the ratchet and this is exactly the same gimbal only this one does not have springs so you can if you want to change from mode 2 to mode 1 you just have to replace the whole gimbals or only try to replace the the springs over here if you really want to do it okay so that's the gimbal what else on this side on the other hand we have two pots and i do like those pots are not moving they are really like super super in place they are not moving at all however the switches for the uh, for the trims are kind of wobbly, which is strange because usually in case of other radios, other manufacturers, the switches are solid and the pods are wobbly. In this case we have something else and we have a joystick over here, a button and that's basically all. Uh, switches, switches, switches. Unfortunately the switches are, like I mentioned, the flat ribbon cable switches. So if a switch breaks, you would have to unsolder this whole setup and replace it, which is super irritating. I wonder if the switches for the Jumper T16 would not fit this radio as well. How they did the potentiometer feel so nicely? <laughs> okay, they are on the separate board. Uh, okay, you see. Uh, the pots are just squeezed into the plastic. This is what gives them this, this nice feeling. They are not directly on the PCB. They are squeezed into the plastic so they fit tightly in place. And overall, overall the radio internally looks kind of nice. Uh, and I would have no objections if unfortunately not the ribbon cables everywhere those flat ribbon cables are uh -uh. maybe to connect this board to this board that would fly but doing everything including gimbals because yeah the gimbals also are connected with the flat ribbon cables um, that kind of complicates everything so so yeah but besides that looks like a solid radio and in the next videos we will also take a look at how this radio function and what kind of ranges you can get from it for today this is all thank you very much for watching and until the next one happy flying